So is it worth it to get ChatGPT? Plus, I'll go through some of the features and how things work by using it today. But ChatGPT was introduced in February. And the three main benefits here is general access to ChatGPT even during peak times. This means if you're trying to perform some sort of functions or ask the chatbot something, you won't get those annoying errors that it's being overused and throttled. Instead, you'll have access to it. Faster response times, this is definitely true, but there's a caveat here because it really applies to the Model 3.5. We'll go through this in a moment. And then priority access to new features and improvements. At the time of this post, it was only available in certain spots of the world, and they still have free access to ChatGPT till this day. So let's figure out if it's worth it to purchase ChatGPT, plus, especially after using it for a month. So first off, whenever you get ChatGPT+, Plus, you'll be welcomed by the same screen that you had while using the previous ChatGPT. You'll put your messages in at the bottom. The newest thing though that you'll notice is a drop down whenever you start a new chat. And that allows you to select whichever model you want to use. Since you're part of the subscription preview, you get three models here. The default 3.5, Legacy 3.5, and the GPT-4. So we'll go through these three real quick just so you can see the speed at which they can generate something. But before we do, let's talk about the cost here. So ChatGPT Plus is $20 per month. Again, we know the main features here, but are they really worth it? One thing that I have loved is that I'm never in a queue and I can directly log in and start asking away here without having to wait in any sort of a queue for people to get out because the resources are limited. And we might ask, why are chat GPT's resources limited? And that's really just because it has a limited amount of computational power, basically server space to run the AI on, which performs its deep learning but you can see how fast it actually wrote all of this. So what if we ask the same exact thing, but we ask it to a different model? So I'm gonna start a new chat, and then I'm gonna use the legacy 3.5. So we can see here that it's about the same, maybe a little slower. And I'd say the responses are pretty much the same. ChatGPT 3.5, the newer version, gave us a little bit more information. Regardless, what I've noticed is between the two models, you do get an improvement, in speed, but it's mainly when you're starting to write code. And there has to be a lot of context clues used in order to figure out what that code needs to be and how to program it for, let's say, some specific language. So let me give you an example of that. Create a basic tic-tac-toe program using C++. Let's see what it comes up with. As you see, it takes a little while to actually get through the program. It looks like it's doing a fairly good job here. Hopefully it doesn't run out of space because that is one of the issues that it still has. And as you can see, it says this program uses and hasn't filled everything out yet. You have to do continue in order for it to finish things out. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna show you a comparison instead. So I'm gonna use the legacy GPT model now and then do the same exact prompt to see how fast it goes. As far as how quickly it's moving, it's not too bad. But one thing you'll notice is that it is writing different code. We'll let this thing finish out real quick so when it comes down to a speed improvement here, I'd say they're pretty much on par from what I can tell, but where things really change is when we go to chat GPT-4. One of the things that were announced was the fact that it could take in 25,000 tokens instead of 4,000 tokens, and the fact that it could use roles and much more. So we're gonna talk about those and if chat GPT-4 can use it and whether that makes chat GPT plus worth it for you, but now let's look at this. And the code here is actually much different. And we can tell by just looking at the beginning. Notice how they have an initialized board and a character array called board with rows and columns. In here, it did it differently. Instead, it named out those rows and columns and then it created a display board, but it also is using a vector of strings for the rows and columns, which is much more complicated than the more elegant solution from the newer ChatGPT 3.5 version. Anyways, now you got a handle. The code actually turned out to be a little smaller for this one, probably because of manipulation on those arrays in, this, in the previous program that I showed you, but it was able to actually draw out and tell us a complete response. Fantastic, that seems to work. But now I wanna show you ChatGPT 4. So if we tell ChatGPT 4 to do the same, 
prompt. Let's see how fast this one is. You can noticeably tell that it is much slower here with the ChatGPT4 model. Even though it has much more data under its model, it is much slower than both versions of ChatGPT 3.5. So that's one thing I wanna make you weary of. If you're gonna pay that $20 a month, there is a limitation for how fast it's going to go. In this example, it's actually creating multiple vectors. So it's actually gonna make a more complicated program it probably, from what I've been able to gather, it has been making way better results than ChatGPT 3.5, where whenever you finish some code out and you go to compile it, test it, you have a much better result which with a lot less errors. But probably the most annoying part of this whole thing is really two things. ChatGPT 4 is much more verbose, meaning it talks a lot more in depth about what it's doing and right now with how slow it is, it's kind of annoying that it does that. So make sure to specifically ask for just like the lines of the code. That way it doesn't spend a bunch of time explaining things that you may or may not already know, especially if you're reiterating over code, it's almost pointless to do. Another almost deal breaker for me is because I really just wanna use ChatGPT4, the model, if you look at the very bottom, they don't really specify this anywhere else, but it says GPT currently has a cap of 25 messages for every three hours. Expect significantly lower caps as we adjust for demand. So that kind of sucks. Not only is it slower, so you're not gonna get the same amount of throughput that you do, but it also has caps at what it claims 25 prompts or what they call messages per hour. Now, I haven't actually ran into this cap yet. I'm wondering if it's actually even turned on at this moment, or they're just adjusting it up and down as the loads come in. And they're actually prioritizing people using four because they're trying to get feedback from those customers. So I wanna break all this down in a moment, but if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button so other people can decide whether or not it's worth it for them to buy ChatGPT Plus, at least at the moment but I wanna go into my specific use cases. So one for me, I'm gonna put red and green as pros and cons, green being pro, red being con. One pro for this is there's more accurate results with ChatGPT4. Two, a con is going to be that the model is much slower at producing output. Now you might be asking yourself, well, my ChatGPT 3.5 is pretty slow. Well, that's because you don't have plus, so Another pro is plus boosts your speed significantly. For some of the things presented during the GPT-4 event are not in the model yet or can't really be used with the model yet. Things like specifying hardcore guidelines or roles, five, not being able to use images in the model, or six, the 25,000 token output is still not available. This one, was actually extremely important to me. I thought I would be able to get this with the ChatGPT4 model. And I'm really holding out on this one here because then I can not only give it a lot more context, but I'll be able to get more results from ChatGPT. Finally, the last con here that I can think of is you can't update the model with, like they said, by pointing it to a website. I have heard rumors of this one where they plan on giving us access to an extension, perhaps over here, that would allow us to scrape a website. Another benefit, of course, is the priority access. Not only do you access at high peak times, but you get access to new models, which is fantastic. So you can test things out, figure out whether or not those things, how to use those things before the rest of the general public can use them. So that's definitely a benefit. So for me, the fact that just the speed significantly increases in the peak times are gone, where I can't access ChatGPT, that's well worth the $20 per month for me. Now, I would like to see some of these other things that they have highlighted for ChatGPT4 get implemented. I'm sure they'll be adding to this slowly over the next few months, but I'm excited to see all that. So again, $20 a month is pretty steep for the current model, but in my mind, if you're using the model a lot and you got a lot of information you gotta get out of ChatGPT, not only are you going to get that information quicker, but you're gonna get more accurate results and you're gonna have the priority access. So in that case, I personally would do it and pay the 20 a month. Otherwise, if you're looking for a more accurate model, 
with roles and more output or even refreshing updating information that the model has, well, you can't really do that currently, at least that I'm aware of. Hopefully this helps you choose between whether or not you really need ChatGPT Plus and now you kind of see the back end of ChatGPT Plus as well as the ChatGPT4 model that you get with it. Let me know if you're planning on getting ChatGPT Plus. If you already have it, let me know some of the cool things that you've done with it in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.